Good morning. Good morning. It's good to be in the Lord's house today with you. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Um, we might have some, a few people sliding in a little bit late today. I don't know. <laughs> the roads were a little slick. We didn't get those that 10 inches, though, so we can thank God that uh, um, it was supposed to be 6 to 10 last night. <laughs> Yeah, okay. I have an old weather report. So, um, anyway, so it's good to be here in the house of the Lord this morning as we continue our Christmas celebration. Um, uh, just a couple of quick announcements. There is no Oasis this week, um, and um, there is a theological conference coming up at Our Savior in Lansing. Uh, out on the information table, there's some of these little flyers and a little sign up sheet. If anybody wants to go, maybe a carpool. Uh, that sheets out there. It's $20 uh, for the conference. Uh, it's, uh, the topic uh, looks uh, pretty interesting. It's uh, about how the church has been uh, marginalized and ridiculed and how we are uh, as a people, uh, as God's children, to respond to that. So it may be enlightening uh, for many of you if you would like to go. Uh, the sign-up sheet's out there. Uh, okay, uh, let's begin with our opening prayer. Good morning, church. Good morning. Happy, New Year. Happy New Year. Please, please pray with me. Heavenly Father, as we are surrounded by darkness in this world, have mercy on us. Give us eyes of faith to see your Son and to follow him. Help us to grow in faith and keep us firm in the faith so we can live our lives as good and faithful servants. Amen. Amen. Let's rise as we sing. Thank you. 
Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. And the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation for all people. This is good, and it is pleasing in the sight of God our Savior, who desires all people to be saved, and to come to the knowledge of the truth. He is the propitiation for our sins, and not for our own, but also for the sins of the whole world. For there is no distinction, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, and are justified by His grace as a gift to the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God put forward as a propitiation by His blood to be received by faith. For the wages of sin is death. Let us confess our sins to God our Father.
Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the second chapter. Glory Glory to you, Lord. Lord. The child, Jesus, grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. Now his parents went to Jerusalem every year at, at the feast of the Passover. And when he was 12 years old, they went up according to custom. And when the feast was ended, as they were returning, the boy Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem. His parents did not know, but suppose, supposing him to be in the group, they went a day's journey. But then they began to search for him among their relatives and acquaintances. And when they did not find him, they returned to Jerusalem searching for him. After three days, they found him in the temple, sitting among the teachers, listening to them and asking them questions. And all who heard him were amazed at his understanding and his answers. And when his parents saw him, they were astonished. And his mother said to him, Son, why have you treated us so? Behold, your father and I have been searching for you in great distress. And he said to them, Why were you looking for me? Did you not know that I must be in my father's house? And they did not understand the saying that he spoke to them. And he went down with them and came to Nazareth and was submissive to them. And his mother treasured up all these things in her heart. And Jesus increased in wisdom and in stature and in favor with God and man. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, o Christ. You may be seated as we sing, Mary, did you know? Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. 
Amen. Get it spread out and make it. <laughs> How much truth can you handle? How much advice are you willing to listen to? Uh, even when it's good, sound, and biblical. Uh, do, you, do you reach a, a point where it becomes repetitive, so you just kind of tune out and, and stop listening? Or, or is it so intense that, that it becomes too much to handle or, or even to contemplate? As a, as a father, it seems that I've spent the last 25 years constantly offering up warnings to my boys. Only date Christian girls. Don't do drugs. Read your Bible. Go to church. Pray. Don't hang out with those who who may get you into trouble. You know, work hard, be honest, control your temper, don't argue with an idiot, be respectful, don't drink and drive, be careful how you, how you reply to insults, don't compromise your faith, remember who and whose you are, trust God, not man. And don't believe everything that you hear. Question everything. Don't be deceived. And the truth will always lead you to God. Yes. On and on and on. You know, I want what's best for my boys. I want them to be safe. I want them to keep their heads on straight. I want them to make the right decisions. I want them to recognize right from wrong, good from evil. I want them to be wise and choose good. I don't want them to have a worldly wisdom, but godly. Yet there are times when, when I feel like they just don't want to hear it. Or perhaps I, I've just overloaded them with, with too many caution flags. You know, I don't want them to suffer because of bad decisions. Maybe they need to gain wisdom the hard way. And that's how I, I feel sometimes about the people of hope. My prayer for each of you is to be wise and discerning, not led astray from the truth by, by human cunning, deceitfulness, or worldly desires. But again, I can only speak and preach biblical truth. I can't make you hear, and I can't make you choose wisely. You know, in our Old Testament text from 1 Kings chapter 3, we come to the, the story of Solomon, the son of David, the king of Israel. And his reign, it began with such hope and promise. Solomon loved the Lord and, and had an upright heart and walked in faithfulness. And in our reading, we're told that, that as he slept, the Lord appeared to him in a dream, and, and God offered him a gift. Ask what I shall give you. You know, I wonder what you or I would have asked for under the same circumstances today. You know, health, wealth, power, prosperity, perhaps for ourselves or for our kingdom. But Solomon didn't choose any of those, but... Of all the things that he could have asked for, he asked for and he sought wisdom. He desired the power to, to know between right and wrong so that he could rule justly and in such a way that God would, would be pleased and the people would benefit. And God granted him wisdom. And people from all the world came to hear and learn from him. He knew what was right and how to apply that wisdom in real life situations. And we've all heard the story and know it of the two women who, who claimed to be a child's mother and how he decreed that the baby be cut in two, knowing that the real mother would never allow her child to be, be killed. In, in the book of Proverbs, in which he wrote the greater part, is so beautifully gives practical advice on how people, especially young people, should think about the lives which lay ahead of them. 
Sadly, though, Solomon's story didn't end as well as it started. As he increased in wealth and honor, he who was wise became a fool. You know, Solomon enlarged his kingdom through diplomacy. He took many wives who believed in false gods. And they turned his heart, and he began to forget the God who loved him. You know, the great king who built the Lord's temple in Jerusalem also built shrines to pagan deities, including Ashtoreth, the goddess of the Sidonians, and, and Milcom, the abomination of the Ammonites. The very same Solomon whose wisdom saved a child and put that child with its rightful mother was now building temples where children were sacrificed to pagan gods. The Solomon who rose to the, the pinnacle of wisdom fell to the deepest depths of folly. Solomon became just another corrupt ruler. Israel needed more. A greater king, a better son of David, who would reign with wisdom and establish a kingdom that would never fall. Israel needed not just a wise king, but a king who could save its people from the folly of sin. In our gospel for today, today from Luke 2 reveals to us the, the true son of David born in Bethlehem as a boy who increased in wisdom and in stature and in favor with God and man. Jesus appeared in our, in our reading filled with wisdom beyond his years. You know the story how Joseph and Mary and the rest of the family spent a day heading home and, until they realized that Jesus wasn't in their group? And then they rushed back and spent three days trying to find him. And where did they find him? In the temple with the great teachers. And all who heard him were amazed at his understanding and his answers. Here is hope. Here is wisdom and a mystery. Jesus, a boy, grows in wisdom and stature, and he himself is the wisdom from on high. He is the eternal wisdom through whom the world was made. And Jesus showed in his life throughout Galilee and Judea to all of Israel that wisdom as he preached and as he taught them. And Jesus also shows us that same wisdom through his holy word. Today as we hear, as we read, and as we study the holy scriptures. You know, as we look back to Solomon in, in his later years, we see that some of his wisdom was given to him the hard way. He wrote in Ecclesiastes, vanity of vanities, all is vanity. He had his focus misdirected from God to those things that, that the world considered important. What he came to know, and each of us needs to know as well, is that what the world considers important isn't. Kingdoms rise and fall. As do kings, wealth comes and goes. You can't take it with you. The wise man dies just the same as the fool. We are mortal creatures, and having come from the dust to the dust, we will return. Wealth and honor are fleeting and temporary, and death will take both the prince and the pauper. The only thing that ultimately matters is the fear of the Lord, the trust in God who alone can save. The world is foolish. It is so caught up in the things that will not last. And sometimes even we close our eyes to the warnings and, and like Solomon, our focus is misdirected by a pretty face, compromise, or the sparkle of gold. Jesus, the wisdom of God, said, Do not be anxious about your life, or what you will eat, or what you will drink nor about your body, what you will put on. Is not life more than food, and the body more than raiment? Jesus our Lord himself offers the true and the final wisdom that Solomon sought. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And the other stuff will be added in the life to come. Seek the heavenly treasure. 
Follow the way of heavenly wisdom. And Jesus is that treasure. He is our wisdom. The true son of David, who by the folly of the cross saved us from our foolish ways. Our Lord offers to us a kingdom better than Solomon's or any earthly king. The kingdom of God will never fade or fall, and the devil himself cannot prevail against it. The kingdom of Christ brings eternal joy and takes away all our fears, even the fear of death. You know, how often have, have we, like Solomon, been led astray, seeking worldly wisdom and been made fools? How often have we forgotten or failed to listen to the wisdom of our Father? And today we're reminded that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the Holy One is insight. Hear the word of wisdom. Make the most of your time here for the sake of the kingdom of God and for the proclamation of the gospel. You know, all the things of this world will slip away, but the word of the Lord endures forever. And the gospel is the word of eternal life. Thanks be to God who gave us his Son. Thanks be to the Son, the good King, and our true wisdom who through his death and resurrection has saved us. Thanks be to the Spirit, who through the gospel made us his people, that we might live forever in his kingdom. Thank you for making us wise for salvation through faith in Jesus Christ. In his holy name. Amen. Amen. Having heard God's word, let us rise together and confess this faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. of God in Christ Jesus, and for all people according to their needs. Lord of hosts, preserve your church and look favorably on her ministers. Give them delight in this joyful season and restful reflection on the mystery of your incarnation, that they may preach your word boldly and faithfully. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our Heavenly Father, your Son diligently heard the word of God and grew in wisdom and stature. Keep the families of your church abiding in your word, eager to be found among your word and sacraments, and always treasuring your divine wisdom and favor. Give unto us wise and discerning minds focused on you and your kingdom, wise unto salvation and protected from the folly of the world. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Heavenly Father, give patience and endurance to all who are sick or in any need, especially Roy, Luann, Luana. Linda, pray for the Mills family and Dan, pray for Jim, Gabrielle and Aubrey and all our young people as they, that they have discernment and wisdom. We pray for those who mourn the Hobson family and the Bachman family. Give comfort and hope to all, Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Lord God, Heavenly Father, in mercy you have established the Christian home among us. We implore you, rule and direct our hearts to be good examples to children and those subject to us, that we may faithfully teach them to love your church and hear your blessed word. Give them your spirit and grace, 
that this seed may bring forth good fruit and our home life may advance your glory, honor, and praise, as well as our own improvement and welfare, giving offense to no one, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Taught by our Lord and trusting in his promises, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord has helped his servant Israel. In remembrance of his mercy as he spoke to our fathers, to Abraham and his offspring forever. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Please rise for a closing hymn, Joy to the World. <laughs> 